If they are creating a positive classroom environment, they're connecting with the students, students are learning concepts, it's a real positive win. If they're actually still rocking up every day with a smile on their face and giving it their all, that is worth celebrating. Make sure that as a class, as a mentor teacher and a pre-service teacher together, that you're celebrating those wins and providing that encouragement. Welcome to Rainbow Skies for New Teachers, where we're all about bite-sized tips and simple strategies for bright and busy new teachers. If you're in your first few years of your career and want to make the roller coaster ride of teaching more fun, streamlined and stress-free, you're in the right place. We're Ashley and Alicia, the dynamic duo from Rainbow Sky Creations, and we're excited to be your teacher mentors on the go. There are rainbows ahead, my friend, and together we're unstoppable. Let's get into today's episode. Rainbow Sky Creations acknowledges the traditional owners of the land we have recorded this podcast on, the Darawal and Wujak Noongar people. We pay our respects to their elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander cultures. Welcome back to Rainbow Skies for New Teachers. Alicia, I am reading a book and I would love your opinion on this. If Hit you me guys, with it. If you guys out there don't know, Alicia and I always have bonded over reading. We really enjoy reading as a pastime. We don't get to do it as much these days that now that we're mums. But I'm reading a book and it does not have any speech marks for when somebody is talking. It's just all text. Oh, that's overwhelming. Especially I'm no grammar expert and I don't correct people with their grammar, but that would be tricky. I I feel like you need just a break to know I'm thinking about someone talking right now. I know. I feel like my brain is getting confused without the speech marks. I'm thinking, is it the teacher in me? And I'm just wondering why this author chose to do that. My question is, are they self-published? Because who would agree to publish a book like this? (laughs) Well, no, it's actually a really famous author. So years and years ago, everyone, if you don't know our backstory, Alicia and I taught together in Dubai and we were finishing up the school year and we were both going on big trips. And there was a secondhand book thing in our staff room and teachers could come and collect books that they'd read. Like, you know, you put the books that you had read and teachers could come and collect other ones. Alicia picked up this book and I remember saying to her, oh... I really want to read that. And it was a Celia Ahern book. And it was brilliant. Alicia gave this book to me. Like, how kind is that? I took it to India on my travels. I read it. My sister read it. We loved it. This is the first Cecilia Ahern book I have read since the book you gave me. And it is the one without speech marks. So she's a really well-known author. Yes. I can't recall reading any of her books recently. But my question is, are you hooked? Are you wanting to read on? Or is it a bit of a deterrent? No, it's not a deterrent. I am definitely reading on it. It's a very interesting story, mostly because, and I feel like we're waffling now, we will get into the content, everyone, but mostly because the main character is a parking ticket officer and my husband hates the parking police. And he's always like, who would ever want to do that job? And so I'm getting a bit of an insight through this main character of the sort of person who would want to do that job. Yeah. That's fascinating. And I think sometimes the question is leading into our topic is a lot of the time people go, why would you want to be a teacher? True. (laughs) And I think sometimes that you need to get different perspectives and you need to get two sides of the story or three sides of the story. I feel like maybe she as well is doing a bit of a novelist experiment of seeing how important is punctuation. She's trialing out something. She's testing something out, which is what we do as teachers as well. So I'm intrigued to see how this all goes, the end of your story, if you're actually still hooked in just as much going, do you know what? I'm writing blog posts now, Leash, without any punctuation. Let's see how that goes. (laughs) I have a feeling our teacher audience would not be down for that. (laughs) Okay, so you kind of gave a little bit of a clue about what we are talking about today. And if you've seen the title, of course, you would know. But we're going to talk about PRAC experiences at school during this episode, but it's going to be in two parts. So don't go anywhere if you are a teacher and you're teaching in the classroom. The first part we're going to talk about if you are entering a PRAC and some things you can do to be ahead of the game, to have a really successful prac and to set you above the rest. The second part of the episode is going to be if you are a mentor teacher to a prac teacher and how you can go about looking at that. So don't go anywhere or skip through halfway through the episode for when we go to that second part, if you are looking or want to look into having a prac student at some point. That's it. Now, being a prac student, oh gosh, it's that part of university that you're really excited to do, but also terrified to do because you know you're going to get into the classroom, you're going to have that experience being a teacher, which is what you signed up for, for your university degree in education. So we're going to give you five quick takeaway tips. And 
these ones are just going to help you have it at the forefront of your mind. And if you keep these in mind, you're going to be fine. So number one, tell us what it is, Ash. Manners aren't just for kids. You've got to remember when you are going on prac, you are a guest in somebody's classroom. It might seem really simplistic to say you need to use your manners, but it's really important. Experienced teachers are inviting you into their classroom. They're putting their own time aside to kickstart your teaching career. So be grateful to them. Make sure that you have manners. Say thank you at the end of each day. It goes such a long way and it just doesn't stop at that mentor teacher that you have. The office staff in particular, make sure that you're always extending your manners or your gratitude to those office staff as well. The secretaries are a heart of a school and it's really important to treat them like gold. And this is a good lesson to learn at the very, very beginning before you even become a teacher. You are going to get so far if you treat those secretaries like gold. Yeah, that is so true. And even if you're going in for like your second or your final prac and you have your mentor teacher has a grade partner and you're like, actually, I can come help you in your classroom. Or if you need help putting up a display, I can help you with that. Yes. And it's just showing that kind of collegiate support. But as well, even though you're going into the other classroom, you're going to learn things by just being a bit of a fly on the wall by seeing how another teacher does things. So manners are gold. Pocket that one. (laughs) Yes, put that one in your pocket. Next one is first impressions are a thing. Now you need to show up, you need to look professional, you need to be approachable with a smile and all of that can go a really, really long way. Being proactive, being prepared, having a plan or ready to go all come together for a really good first impression. Yes. Be organized is really helpful in that first impression as well. If you've already read up on the website, like you know what time the school bells like are starting, you know what time you're expected to be there. You could even prepare in advance by asking your mentor teacher for the timetable so that you have an idea on when they might be on duty. So just having as much information and really just showing initiative, but ask the questions. If you've got things that you want to know, that's going to help you improve your first impressions or your impressions in the school, ask them. No question is a silly question. No, definitely ask questions. Have you ever hosted a prac student, Alicia? I have. I have indeed. Me too. I've had many over the years. And I love it when they ask questions because you know they want to know, especially when they've got their pen and paper out and they're jotting things down so they don't forget. You can see that they're dedicated. Yeah, absolutely. And I hate being that person who feels like I'm just telling people stuff for the sake of telling them. It's like, do you want to know this? I'm happy to tell you. (laughs) Totally. All right. What's number three? The third one is to get involved. Look, immerse yourself in the classroom, into the school culture, the environment, show interest. Look, this might look like taking notes while the teacher is explicitly teaching, helping a student that is struggling, like actually being proactive and going over there and having a chat with the student and connecting with them, providing an answer during class discussions to help spark more ideas and conversation from the students, offering to work with a small group, tidying up after a previous lesson. And this one, one will go a long way. If you see there's work that needs to be marked, it could just be a spelling book, a grammar book, or maybe it's like a maths worksheet they did and you mark it. Oh my gosh, mental teacher is going to love you. Yep. 10 stars for that. Just any way that you can make that mentor teacher's life a little bit easier is going to get you so far on your prac. You've got to remember too that the mentor teacher has got their normal classwork, they've got you, and it might feel like that you're giving them a helping hand and you are, but at the same time, they do have other jobs that they need to do that are associated with you being there in the classroom. So easing up a little bit of their workload and simple things like just sitting down with that child that is a little bit distracted and just helping them stay on track can make a huge difference. Another thing that is really great for PRAC students to get involved in is if there's a dress up day. If it's book week, get dressed up, have fun. If you're going on an excursion, offer to take a group around with the excursion. They're the group that you're in charge with. There is so many different things that you can do to get involved and just be a part of that class. Mm. And you really just want to showcase who you are, right? Because the reason you're in a classroom as a practice student is to get that hands-on experience. This is the time for you to make mistakes. This is for the time for you to say, do I really enjoy this job? Do I love doing what I'm doing? And when you're getting involved, you're just seeing that all those decisions and quick change actions that happen as an educator. It's only going to help you. And this is the time in your career where you probably are going to push, push, push and really give it 110%. And you know, you can always take the pedal off the gas once you kind of get those 
qualifications and you're like, all right, I am officially a full-fledged teacher, so I don't have to go 100% gung-ho all the time. This is kind of like an exception to the rule as a prac teacher. Yeah, you're so right, actually. One thing I always noticed when I have prac students myself is that they were really tight because they were still doing their university work. They were still working to, in mm. order to make money and then they were coming to school full-time. And we're not denying it. It is really, really hard. And it kind of is a bit of a rite of passage that you just need yeah. to get through. It's only short-term pain. So push through that short-term pain because it's going to be worth it in the end. These are such rich learning opportunities. Yeah, for sure. Number four, build relationships respectfully. Now you're going to be working with a lot of people as a teacher. You've got students, you've got colleagues, you've got administration staff, you just got a lot of people around you and parents. Can't forget those parents. No. So keep in mind, you are in a school as a professional. So develop these relationships in that manner. Like you don't want to be oversharing what's happening in your personal life. You want to kind of keep things professional. You want to keep things light. You don't want to be oversharing on what's happening with another kid's family, X, Y, Z. So just make sure you're going in there and you're just being your professional self. You are keeping conversations light and you'll know if there's a need to divulge more information. And the person I'd probably be divulging it to would be my mentor teacher because they're yeah. the one who I'm working closely with. If there's something happening that I need them to know, I'm going to share that with them. Not everybody in the staff room. Yeah. The one mistake we see pre-service teachers often make is wanting the students or the other staff members to really like them. And I think that's really a normal thing. You want people to like you, but your students, you're not there to be their best friends. You're there to be their teacher. And it's really important that we have those roles clearly defined and they will really love you as their teacher, even if you aren't their best friend. Kids love boundaries. Mm -hmm. Kids love being seen. And they love being heard. That's all very, very important, but you can do that with your boundaries. Yeah, absolutely. There's time where you can have a chat with a student and be like, they love soccer. You're sharing a tidbit about you and your life as soccer, but then you set those boundaries of being like, okay, great. Now let's get to work. Let's see if we can be our speedy soccer players and get our maths questions done or whatever it might be. So just make sure you're very clear and concise on what needs to be done when you're having that time to connect with students, which is very important too. But those, remember, keep at the back your mind, boundaries, clear, concise instructions with them will help. All right. The last tip for pre-service teachers before we move on to mentor teachers is all about phones. And this one's a little bit controversial, but please hear us out. Phones need to go away. And I know that this one can be really tricky in today's society, but the school day is not a time to have your phone out. If you want to take a photo of something for evidence or to remind yourself, Look, that is fine. I would personally do that at lunchtime or at recess when the students aren't in the class, but place that phone on silent in your bag because it's a sign of professionalism. Your mentor teacher is going to be impressed if they see you engaging with the students and with what's happening in the classroom instead of looking on your phone, even if you're taking photos or notes for the PRAC. So mm -hmm. I know that this one seems hard, but it's one of those things that you're giving off an impression that's not really the right one. Mm. Look, if you are a techie person, and I get this, this is my husband down to a T, he has his tablet and his tablet is where he takes all his notes on it. So if that's you and you have your good notes up or one note and you're taking notes, that's totally fine. You can just actually maybe use your tablet as a form of taking photos if you feel it's necessary. But mm. there's probably time where you can put it aside and not be taking photos. And also in that sense of if you do have a tablet, just make sure you don't have all your messages and notifications linked to your tablet. That's going to be pinging off while you're actually supposed to be in class. If you choose to have that sort of device, or if you're a pen or paper, you're putting the phone away. Look, it's just general respect yeah. <laughs> for everyone. And it's going to be better for your brain. Every time you're hearing notifications or you're checking your phone, you're thinking about it, your brain is switching gears all the time and you can't be fully present for this job that you really want to do. So put it away. You'll be better for it. Yeah, totally. We're both in agreement on that. If you were working in a shop, you couldn't walk around with your phone on you. And as teaching staff, it's really important that our kids come first and that phone is a way. I know that if I was in the classroom today, I would not have my phone on my person unless I was out in the playground, maybe for the time. And I know some schools do like you to take those phones out into the playground, which I hate, by the way. I feel like they could just send a message over to you. I'm sorry. I just chuckled at that. I might take my phone to the playground for the time. Yeah. Have you heard of a watch? <laughs> no, I don't wear a watch because I'm left-handed, everybody. 
<laughs> I, I, uh, actually, as one of the tips I always used to give my practice students, because time was always an issue with teaching lessons. Agreed. And, and I actually bought my iWatch for this reason is because it has an inbuilt timer. And I still use this timer to this day with my family. And I would always be like, I've got 10 minutes to do my warm up. I'm going to put my timer on and it would just go off silently on my wrist. I'd be like, okay, right, wrap it up. And it was a lifesaver. And I used it to the day I finished off teaching and went on my turn you leave a timer on your watch is oh my god the most amazing thing for me that personally. is really really clever I love that idea yeah us, so yeah us lefties we have a real problem with watches because you either have it on your left hand which is normal but that's where yeah. you're riding so it like gets chunky yes. and in the way or you have it on your right hand and just doesn't seem right does anyone else left-handed and like have this issue or is it just me <laughs> look there's 10 percent of the population out there who are uh, like you so it's look it's an interesting and valid question to ask so help us out there fellow lefties i feel like there's quite a few dramas lefties have as being a teacher another one's writing on the whiteboard quite a drama being a lefty <laughs> no wonder you guys end up with like rsi or, i you know, know. <laughs> The Hive is an all-in-one online hub for your classroom, a launch pad with everything you need all in one place. Think of it as your digital teaching partner. The Hive was created by former teacher and assistant principal, Tam, aka Mrs. Learning Bee, and her software developer husband, Jez. Their vision is simple, to find new and innovative ways to make teachers' lives easier while also making learning fun and engaging for students. Some of the features that they've pioneered are the online visual timetable and digital teacher planner, the first ever planner for teachers and students, an innovative phonics app, including their famous word builder and beetle game. That's my favorite. Buzzboard, their complete digital whiteboard, an ever-growing bank of digital learning tools and classroom management tools, which take customization to the next level. And lastly, the unique classroom dashboard that just brings everything together. That dashboard is a game changer. Tam and Jez have built the Hive in collaboration with thousands of teachers from around the world, actioning their feedback to build updates and features that are needed in classrooms. And the best part, they are only just getting started. There's no shortage of ideas in their brains. The Hive is only going to get bigger and better. Teachers, it's time to level up your classroom. Try it out for yourself today with a seven-day free trial. Head to Hive. Dot Mrs. Learning dot com. Okay, so we're going to switch gears now and talk about the other side of PRAC and being a mentor teacher for a pre-service teacher. Now, pre-service teachers don't go away because this is definitely worth listening to as well because you're going to get the perspective of the person that is helping you along your PRAC journey. So if you're choosing to host a PRAC student, just be aware there is a little bit more work that comes to having a PRAC student, but it is a great learning experience for a senior teacher as well. So the first thing that you want to factor in is that your communication expectations. You want to clearly communicate to your PRAC student what are their expectations, the guidelines, what's the classroom routine. You want to provide them an overview of your classroom's curriculum, any planning that's happening while they're there, teaching strategies, assessment practices, a list of the students' names, your timetable, when you're on duty. You just want to make it really clear and concise. You might be going, oh, I'm a little bit over the top, but look, one, the prac student's going to appreciate it, especially if they're not really one to ask questions straight away. But if you've got a prac student who's like happily asking questions, that makes your life easier on the communication front. If they're doing their lesson planning, you need to let them know when their lesson needs to be in by so that you can review it and give them feedback. So be very clear on your expectations with communication. Yes. I've got a disaster story about this. Tell so us. I had my last practice, I've never had one since I was actually pregnant with my first child at the time. So emotions were running high. Emotions were running very high. <laughs> I was probably a little bit more tired than normal and I had this practition come in and I had been begged to have this practition because no one else really wanted to have a student in their class. And they said, it'll be good for you. You're pregnant. It'll be great to have an extra set of hands. And I thought, yeah, you know, you're right. So in the practice student came and she decided that every time she was going to teach a lesson, she was going to send it to me, but she would send it to me between the hours of midnight and 3 a.m. So she must have been a one who loved to stay out late. I'm an early bird. I love to go to bed at nine o'clock, but also I was pregnant. So I was bloody tired. 
So I would get to school. She was only teaching one, two lessons a day. So I would also have to plan my lessons. And I was on the leadership team at the time. So I had lots and lots of things to do. And she would come in and she'd be saying, have you read my lesson? And I'd say, no. And then I'd open it up and say, you sent this at 3 a.m. this morning. There is no way I have time to read this lesson. Give you feedback for the lesson that's going to be taught at 9.20 today. Like you need to send it in earlier. Anyway, this went on. The feedback continued. You need to send it in earlier. Then she felt like, Well, if she was sending it in earlier at 11 p.m., that would give me ample time to give her feedback. That was just one slice of the disaster of this practice student. She ended up failing. It was awful. It was an awful experience for every single person involved. But be respectful of your mentor teacher, especially when you're looking to get feedback. Remember, they still have their job to do. So giving you feedback is an extra part. You need to give them plenty of time to read over it and then give you the feedback so you can make changes. Look, really think of it as teachers working hours of like nine to five. You know what I mean? Like eight to five. You need to get your information in between those hours, which gives the teacher enough time to know that this is something that I need to follow up on. Don't even like, don't even, I was sending, actually funny you should say, I was sending an email out to my daughter's new school for next year when she's starting kindy. And I was doing this at nine o'clock at night. And I was like, I'm about to send this to someone at a school administration who's like going to be like, why is this person sending me stuff at nine o'clock at night? So I hit the schedule, send this at 8 a.m. tomorrow, please, because it's just more kind and respectful. So a tip for all Prax students, when you are sending emails to parents and you might be writing it at nine o'clock at night, do not send it, schedule it to go out the next morning at a reasonable hour, like 7.30 a.m. or 8 a.m., whatever it might be. That's a lesson for all teachers, really, if you're communicating with parents. Sometimes like 9.30 at night might be the only time you get to that email. But in order to set those boundaries, it's a great idea to schedule it out because you're not giving that parent then that communication, that unspoken communication that you are sending those emails at 9.30 at night. They don't need to know that. If they're receiving it within your work hours, it is much better. Yes, for everyone. So communication Mm. is the key. Yes, okay. (laughs) Next up is about establishing a mentor relationship. So you're a mentor to this PRAC student and you need to create a supportive learning environment for them, just like what we would do for our students. Encourage open communication, provide constructive feedback, provide feedback that they can actually action or Mm -hmm. things that they can change and be available to answer their questions and concerns. Yeah. Look, it can be, if this is the first time that you have a pre-service teacher, it can be quite daunting, especially I know when the university sends out all the information that you need to know and all the paperwork and you're like, oh my gosh. And you can feel like it's an extra weight on your shoulders Mm. as a mentor teacher. So just be along those lines of creating a professional relationship and keep the lines of communication open. It's beneficial for everyone. And like Ash had with that disaster experience, you're just continually respectfully and kindly as Ashley would have been doing is reminding her that actually this is how we do things. This is what needs to be done. And if the message isn't getting through, yeah, perhaps there is an alternative path for them in the future. (laughs) Yes. Okay, the next one is all about involving them in lesson preparation. So this is really important because they are here to learn. Practice students have not often had a lot of experience actually inside a classroom. They've had plenty of experience in university and as a student themselves, but not as the teacher. So discuss the learning objectives, the teaching methods and resources that you have in your classroom, and then give them opportunities to contribute their own ideas and their own perspectives. Sometimes it's really hard as a teacher because you want to have control and you think, oh, I need to teach this right, but we are committing to giving this pre-service teacher a chance and a go at teaching things when we have them. So it's important. Alicia's laughing away over there. No, I, do, you know, no do you know why I'm laughing? Because I'm thinking of Grey's Anatomy and I love Grey's Anatomy. Like I've yeah. watched all 20 seasons. You've got doctors there who are learning to be surgeons and they're there operating on people, doing procedures they've never done before. And what's the greatest risk that could happen? Someone dies, right? So yeah. when you're thinking of this and putting it in perspective, oh my gosh, I'm learning a practice student 
didn't decide on like a lesson or a game. Like that is not disaster, my friends. Like no. just <laughs> let them try it. Nobody's going to die in the process, right? And I always loved having prep students in or just around the school because one, the energy is high, they're excited, but they have just really fresh and great ideas. And another thing for letting your pre-service teachers be involved in the planning process is they can see and watch you do it and talk it out. And you might actually get your students up and be like, oh, I'm just going to refer to my data and just see, do I need to maybe pull some aside because we're on this topic and they found this really tricky. They start to see the thought process behind it all. So yeah, do it, get them involved. It's beneficial for everyone and they need to learn. Totally. One thing I really love to do when my prac student first starts is I love to throw them in the deep end and say, on the second day, I want you to choose a book, any book. It doesn't matter if it's not about what we're learning about. And I want you to read it to the class. Even if you teach older grades, they're always often nervous about doing it, but it's just a great way for them to learn to sit in front of the class, talk to the students, use their voice. And then I get a bit of an idea of where they're going to need that help. And then you've broken the ice. They've done yeah. that first session in front of the students and it's not as scary anymore. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good one. Okay, next up. Oh, it's the one you don't particularly enjoy doing. Observe and provide feedback. It's more the feedback. It's more the paperwork that's involved with it. But when observing your practice students teaching, provide constructive feedback and highlight their strengths and areas for improvement. Think of the two stars in a wish, two things they did awesome and one thing to work on. You can't be telling them one thing they did awesome and 10 things they have to work on. That's not realistic and sustainable for anyone. So remember, you've got them in your classroom for a block of weeks. So you build it up, build those layers up of setting those foundations of if they've really got to work on giving the teaching element and giving instructions, then make that their focus area. Then if they need to work on their questioning, layer it up, that becomes their next focus area. So two stars and a wish. That's a really great tip. And I think then the stars can be those things that they've achieved. So if your wish was that teaching element and breaking things up into steps and they do that in their next lesson, then that can be the star. Like you've really improved there. Now let's work on this. And they're not going to be perfect. No one is when you first start. I, I'm sure that if Alicia and I got into a classroom today and you looked at a lesson, it wouldn't be perfect either. But everyone's doing their best. And so we just need to offer that guidance and that positive support as well as the constructive feedback. Yeah, you can't necessarily just give them feedback and then not give them any way on how to achieve that feedback. You've got to provide that scaffolding for them. And that's what you agreed to do as a mentor teacher. Yeah. So observe, provide feedback, realistic feedback. Okay, the next one is about encouraging reflection and self-assessment. I think it's really important that the pre-service teachers have that element of self-assessment and reflecting on how they went and what they think that they can do better next time, because that is what teaching is all about. If you're a pre-service teacher and you're still listening to this part of the episode, that's a little insider tip for you. Yeah, it's an expectation of you as well with the university to provide an element of feedback on how you are going. And as much as you may not enjoy it, it's actually really beneficial and a secret there are some teachers who've been teaching for years who do still do this. Yeah. They kind of look back on how they're going for the month and go, oh gosh, really need to tighten up there. Totally. Me when I'm driving home from work every day. <laughs> <laughs> Just that mental to-do list, that mental checklist. Yeah. Okay. Set up times for meetings. Now, this is important because time is one of those factors as a teacher that seems just to get away from us. So set up some time throughout the week that is locked in, ready for you and your pre-service teacher. It might be a morning before school, an afternoon before school, or two lunch times a week, whatever sort of works for you and your time of day. But create that time so that a, you can set boundaries for your pre-service teacher, but also so your pre-service teacher knows what you're expecting of them. Yeah, absolutely. Have that time set aside so they know this is your, like your time. You can ask me anything. I can check in with you. I can give you some feedback or guidelines for what's coming up next for the week and make sure you let them know when you would want those lessons submitted because when it starts to come to the point where they're doing lessons every single day, you build it up. There are a lot of lesson plans coming in that they have to do, which isn't the best part of being a pre-service teacher. I'll admit mm. it because it is very thorough that you have to provide a very detailed lesson plan and you know realistically that's not happening once you are officially in the classroom teaching your own students. Just make sure you're letting the pre-service teacher know, I need those lessons in by this time and go from there. And just make sure you're really firm on that. If you start to keep letting that slide, you've got 
11 p.m., 3 a.m. lesson plans coming in and ain't nobody's checking it at that time. No, no, especially not pregnant, Ashley, that's for sure. All right, we've got two more tips for you. The second last one is model effective teaching practices. Look, as a teacher, you've probably found you've got yourself into a groove, but you want to expose different teaching methods, teaching styles, different ways that you can show students how to learn a concept. So just make sure you're exposing your prac student to that variety. And I think something that I also loved about having a prac student was that it allowed me to do that self-reflection and go, oh, how can I do things differently? Am I being the best teacher that I can be? Take it as a learning opportunity for yourself and expose them to those variety of learning styles. Yeah. On the flip side, give them the opportunity to try different things, try different methods, learning and teaching styles in the classroom as well. It's really great for PRAC students to have that opportunity to give things a go, even if they might not work. That's it. And at the end of the day, the final one to wrap that up is look, celebrate successes and provide encouragement. And look, if they are creating a positive classroom environment, they're connecting with the students, students are learning concepts. It's a real positive win. If they're actually still rocking up every day with a smile on their face and giving it their all, that is worth celebrating. Make sure that as a class, as a mentor teacher and a pre-service teacher together, that you're celebrating those wins and providing that encouragement. Definitely. All right. So to wrap up, pre-service teachers, this is for you. Your five points for having an awesome prac and staying ahead of the game is remembering that manners, they aren't just for kids, they're for teachers too. Make a good first impression. Get involved in the classroom and the school environment. Build those relationships respectfully and professionally. Remember that your phone needs to go away and I have a bonus one for you. We have a freebie that is going to help you with your prac experience. It is essential prac tips to help you land a job at the end of your prac. And remember that even if you're on your first prac or you're on your fourth prac, that school is a potential employer for you. So we will put the link to that freebie for prac students in the show notes. Now, if you are a mentor teacher, and perhaps this is something you're considering doing in the future, or you're going out this term and starting it, we actually do have a prac teacher mentor guide. We'll link that also in the show notes. We're there to support all areas of your teaching career. The best thing about that mentor teacher guide is that we have put in some different templates to give your prac students some feedback. And that is one of the things that I always thought, oh, I have to start this from scratch when I was a mentor teacher. There's templates in there ready to go for you just to give that feedback. That is one of the great time savers in that guide. Absolutely. Well, until next time, there are rainbows ahead, my friend. And together we're unstoppable. 